the uh, the bottle in front of you right now is a very small bottle of crud cutter and uh, crud cutter makes a bunch of different solvents this one is the must for rust and the reason I picked this up is because I saw some other guy on YouTube do a comparison of four or five different supposedly you know rust solvents rust removers and rust inhibitors and I think he did uh, he did crud cutter he had coke or Pepsi I think he did uh, vinegar white vinegar uh, lime away CLR and then uh, this version of crud cutter if I didn't mention that already so uh, he used I think he had uh, uh, a number of rusty bolts and uh, he put them all in a different bin used the same material or used the material on each one of the different um, bolts and then he had his control bolt off to the side and uh, I, after 24 hours I was really really impressed with uh, the work that uh, crud cutter did because I had met somebody mm, gee this was a few weeks ago I think uh, shelter in place was just starting I think it was that week and so we're talking about three almost four weeks ago uh, for Northern California and when uh, when he put his items up for sale he had put some powder some uh, 55 grain uh, boat tail uh, 224 bullets and uh, he had a couple hundred small rifle primers uh, in the box and uh, and he had a set of uh, 223 uh, dies including the factory crimp and he wanted like 45 bucks for everything and I thought oh, that's worth it um, the picture was uh, not so clear and you never know with pictures because depending on how the picture looks uh, it might not uh, actually resemble the product and this was a perfect case of the picture not matching the product so when uh, when I got the dies uh, this is aluminum so you won't see anything bad but I mean you can see whatever I don't even know what that is um, that's covering that and I haven't tried to clean this yet but uh, I dumped the crud cutter uh, in a container and then let that set for uh, we're going on 24 hours about now and I can still see rust around the the lip here of the die but these dies were really really bad in fact this shell holder let's see what that looks like so the shell holder you can see that it's got um, some remnants but uh, it doesn't look like rust now I'll call it uh, discoloration due to the and let me turn that over due to setting um, in the chemical and what's an easy way to flip that over let's try that so uh, again sitting for about 24 hours and uh, I'll let it sit some more but uh, my goal and the the decapping rod was just atrocious let's see if that can come up a little bit so again you can see the marring of the metal from what the rust did to it but the rust uh, not too bad the rust is uh, not as evident and I don't think you can make it out and this stuff really smells bad it's probably bad to breathe in too uh, I think it's bad for your fingers as I'm touching it what does it say here uh, warning irritant to eyes and mucous membranes okay so that would be why my nose isn't enjoying the smell uh, Actually, it says it's okay for aluminum. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to drop that in there and let that soak for a while and see uh, if it works. So gave the crud uh, cutter a try on some rusted out dies, and I'll let this set probably for another 12 hours or however long. And then take them out and start trying to clean them with, uh, you know, as I would a glun, a uh, glun, as a gun uh, or firearm, and see if I can get them looking uh, better than at least 
how I received them. So uh, no dings on the guy who sold them. He didn't uh, represent them as, you know, new in new condition. He just, uh, you know, here's a bunch of stuff. So you can tell he used to reload. And uh, I'm guessing uh, he had 500 or maybe 1,000 uh, rounds he went through. And that was the leftover bullets, powder, primers. And uh, the dies were, you know, obviously not well taken care of. Uh, and that's exactly why I like my uh, Lee Red Cases, uh, because they keep uh, all the grit, grime, dust, and everything away from the dies. And if I was smart, I would probably get a bunch of these desiccants and put them in with the die. In fact, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, get some packets of silica gel and put them in with the red, uh, red container so that uh, the metal stays uh, as dry as possible or the steel stays as dry as possible. But... Um, we'll see how this goes. So I'll call this a mini restoration. I'm not going to use uh, God's, uh, Godzilla, Redzilla, or the blasting cabinet to uh, try and clean these. This will all just be uh, initial chemical run, and then uh, from there it will be uh, hand cleaning. In fact, I'll take this off the tripod and see if you can see some of the rust particles in the uh, in the chemical. All right, so I have just cleaned these off. In fact, this uh, aluminum was really discolored with this black looking whatever that kind of rubs off a little easy. You can see it on my thumb. Um, so now it's time to clean. So the worst dye was, I think, this one. And as you can see, the, the rust, is, rust is gone. The dye looks a little, what I would call, discolored. But in terms of rust, and again, there's the, the decap pin. The decap pin was in terrible condition. Um, you know, from a rusty point of view, they look a lot better. And now I'm going to give them a good cleaning and then probably put them on the uh, buffing wheel just to uh, bring back some of the luster. But uh, I did a, uh, the liquid in there right now is a brake cleaner, so it is time. In fact, since my hand is all yucky, I'll use my other one, well, thus the gloves. I'll clean them with Ballastol, some Empro, and then I don't know if I'm going to oil them uh, just yet. I think I'll probably do the cleaning. And this stuff just stinks. Woo! I can still smell it. Um... In fact, can I smell it? Eh, it, you get more, it's kind of like a combination of brake clean and uh, whatever that stuff is. Uh, the chemical and the crud cutter. So I'm going to give that a clean. Uh, there's no point in having you guys watch the cleaning. But uh, I say uh, yay for, yeah, this was crud with rust. I say yay for, for the crud cutter. For uh, just chewing, that looks even much better. Chewing through the rust, so good stuff. Back later. All right, they are all clean now. And let's use this one as the example. This is going to be, I believe this is the decap. But you can see the discoloration, the etching in the metal. So they're all cleaned. Everything is nice and smoothish, minus whatever damage the previous owner did like with the Enter the Dragon three claws there. I don't know if you can make that out. Kind of cool. But uh, rust free. Came out nice. Able to get most of the black gunk off this. Took the uh, O-ring off. Because now it's time for the buffing wheel. Let's see what happens. So here's the top half of the die and uh, once the buffing compound is cleaned out, it'll look a lot nicer, like right there. But here's the bottom half, so you can see the before and after. So these will clean up quite nicely. So I will do the rest and be back. Okay, so aside from being dirty from compound and a little hot to the touch, these came out pretty, pretty amazing compared to what they were. So I've got gunk inside that I need to clean out. So now I'll do a ballastol clean. Uh, I did the M-Pro, brake cleaner, M-Pro, buffing. 
and now do ballastol uh, to let the, the metal soak. All right, now we have done the what I would call the last cleaning, and uh, I've got a brand new trim die, uh, five seven by twenty eight from Lee. So I'll use this. This will be the the die that has a lock ring on it. So look at the condition of the lock ring on a brand new die, and then you can see I polished up my lock rings or at least the lock rings that were on here, so they look a lot better. And where's a comparable die? Now here we go. Actually, no, let's do this one. So, this is the uh, cleaned, polished, buffed, recleaned, lubed. Uh, looks, I mean, you can see the difference. The, what the polishing does from uh, standard so I've got a little more sheen on this this came out really nice for the seating die that's aluminum so that'll clean up really nice I, I suppose I can put that away but uh, they all came out great I mean everything turns and functions which it didn't before it was like locked full of uh, frozen uh, um, rust so all the pieces came out really nice you can still see the enter the dragon claws the three claws scratches whatever is what i'm calling them again uh, everything really really cleaned up very nicely compared to how i received them. other than being beat up and chunked because whoever owned this didn't use the right tools to adjust their dies but uh I think I showed this one. And then I showed this one I didn't. So now I'll put them all back together. If I can remember how things go. And uh, store them. Alright, that's it till the next video with maybe uh, everything put together. Alright, these are all together. And... I pulled out my 223 dies from mm, 10 years ago, and I was surprised to see some of the differences uh, as well as uh, similarities. <laughs> What's funny now is my dies look to be in shittier condition than the new dies, <laughs> and I take what I would say pretty good care of my stuff. So, uh, oh well. Uh, again, for 10 years, these are looking pretty pretty solid so uh, first difference the decap um, this decap doesn't even say Lee on it uh, it is a Lee oh there it is uh, it's way down at the bottom whoops there's my powder so uh, the decap looks more like an RCBS decap and resizer with the uh, decapper that will pop out if it uh, gets too much force so um, big difference uh, so I'm going to guess this is a newer design and uh, not much to say about that the powder looks uh, very uh, very similar uh, uh, in size they've redesigned you know the knurling and lettering and whatnot and I had this from a gazillion leftover powder funnel or powder uh, chargers because the uh, O-ring adapt or the O-ring was actually on this die, but again, it, everything was so stuck uh, that I said, eh, might as well replace that. But uh, again, looks uh, very, very comparable. Uh, uh, little, I would say different in the well there goes that old ring the inserts are definitely different looks very similar there and there this looks a little uh, smaller in the powder mouth maybe improvements Maybe I'll have to swap them out. Upgrade. The seating die 
size wise looks the same knurling's a little bit different a little nicer looks a little more updated otherwise uh, kind of the same thing and then last but not least the factory crimp looks I would say pretty much identical lettering's a little bit different knurling you know mine I just buffed this so uh, polishing wheel I've never polished or done anything to my Lee you know other than clean and lube but uh, nothing outside of the standard so these dies looked like shit when I got them and hopefully you'll be able to see that on the video I didn't really take pictures of the dies when I when I got them I should have but uh, I did uh, I did throw it on video so and I can't remember what they look like but uh, these look uh, like they just come out of the uh, the die box so uh, that is a successful quarantine weekend project take care